Grace and peace to you, everyone. Grace and peace to you, and welcome to another Bible study Sunday evening. My name is Brother Shefron Ballantyne. And my name is Sister Anne Marie Ballantyne from the Thusia Seventh day Adventist Church. Grace and peace to you, and a warm welcome to everyone. Amen. And what we're going to do this evening, we are going to go through some additional points from our study. Revelation chapter 17. So we're going to continue where we left off last week by the grace of God by looking at Revelation chapter 17. Please help us to share the life. Please help us to share the life wide, far and wide, so that persons can gain access to the truth that we are sharing this evening. Amen. All right. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you so much for the truths that you have invested in our church in Tuesday Seventh-day Adventist Church. We thank you, dear Father, for the clarity that you have given us, clarity in doctrines, so that we can have clarity in living holy, dear Father, so that we can know how to live, how to trust, how to serve you. We pray now as we go through Revelation chapter 17 that you will grant us your Holy Spirit and help the viewing audience to understand so that they can be saved from their sins, yea, even from the sins of the King of the North, the Scarlet, the King of the South, and the King of the North, the Scarlet Colored Beast and Babylon, respectively. So bless us now, we pray with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so grace and peace to you all once again. Please let us know if there are any issues. Uh, I'm very sorry to see that, Sister Karima, that you have been restricted. But to grace and peace to you, nevertheless, to Sister Marva, Brother Midon, Sister Farrell, uh, grace and peace to you all and those persons who are coming in even as we speak. Grace and peace to you and welcome to another Bible study. Grace and peace to you, my dear Sister Angel, mm-hmm. out of Trinidad and Tobago. So let us, let us take... Uh, review let us have a review of what we looked at last week and so sister Amri will be going over some important points mm-hmm. from last week so that we can 
sort of get that foundation clear before we get into this evening's uh, Bible study. Amen. So I want us to go back to Revelation chapter 17 and we'll read verse 1 to 3. Our focus last week was uh, verse 3, but I'm going to read from verse 1 and then do the brief review on the points that we touched in verse 3. So Revelation chapter 17, get your Bibles, get your pen or your pencils and your notepad and take your notes by God's grace. Follow in the scriptures as we read. Verse 1 says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And we saw three significant points. Firstly, we saw that the wilderness that John was carried into in his mental experience is the world lost and ruined in sin. We saw that clearly. Secondly, we saw that the woman who is called a whore is a church that is in apostasy from the truth. So we are talking about an idolatrous church, a church that apostatized from the truths of Jesus Christ. That's the woman that is being spoken of there. We took some time and we're going to continue that discussion this afternoon to see that the scarlet color beast, the scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy is the same beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 11 and verse seven. And this is the same entity that Sister White referred to as a new manifestation of satanic power. That's very important. We also saw that it refers to apostate Jews. So the scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy refers specifically to apostate Jews who blasphemed and rejected Jesus Christ. And they have influenced the Gentiles. They have influenced the world to reject Jesus Christ. We saw that they are the ones who are responsible primarily for bringing blasphemy to, be, to the mainstream and influencing, as I said before, the whole world, the whole world to blaspheme against Jesus Christ because they rejected Jesus Christ. And up to this day, they continue to reject Jesus Christ. There are many organizations found upon this Jewish spirit of blasphemy. And we briefly looked, Brother Shefflin, at some of these organizations. So in modern day, you will see many names, different institutions that are built on this same spirit of blasphemy. Many Jewish organizations, they may hide behind certain names, but they are built on this same spirit, Jewish spirit of blasphemy. They are antichrist. They reject Jesus Christ. And the principles that they push in the world today, we see it through these principles, their rejection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So we want to continue to look at this um, scarlet colored beast this afternoon by the grace of God. Remember, we are exposing your enemies. We are showing you who your enemies, who our enemies are the king of the north, the king of the south, with the aim in mind that you will receive what we are saying by God's grace. You will understand what we are saying and you will ensure that you escape these blasphemous organizations. You, you, you will ensure that you escape the king of the north, escape the king of the south, but you must know who they are first. And so this is why we are taking the time, taking the time to show you who the scarlet colored beast is 
and who the woman is. We want you to be saved. The Bible shows that you have to come out of Babylon. The Bible shows that you have to leave, reject sin, reject the sinful organization. So you must know who they are to be able to reject them and come to know Jesus Christ, the Lamb who will overcome them all. So may God bless you and thank you again for joining us. Continue to help us to share and as we go through this study by God's grace. Amen. Amen. And so thank you very much, Sister Anne-Marie. Amen. Amen. So let me say us, uh, welcome to you once more. And please let us know if there are any issues with our audio or anything like that. Um, let us know so that we can make whatever adjustments, right? All right. So thank you so much, Sister Anne-Marie, for that review. And what we're going to do, we're going to stay a little while in on the subject of the scarlet colored bees mm -hmm. and we'll not finish that subject this evening because as we go further into revelation chapter 17 mm -hmm. we have to look more into the interpretation of the scarlet colored bees you will remember that the first few verses of revelation chapter 17 are uh verses that show the vision that was given to John. Mm -hmm. And these verses were followed by verses that gave the interpretation. Mm -hmm. We have the first six verses being the vision that was given to John. And from verse seven down, we are given the interpretation. And so what we're basically looking at is the vision that was given to John with some interpretation. Mm -hmm. So we'll not be finished with this describing and exegeting the scarlet colored beast, but it's very important to be able to identify the scarlet colored beast as one of the powers mentioned here, as well as the great whore and her daughters. And so this is so significant that this is seen here and the Bible speaks about the kings as well. Mm -hmm. So let us go back to Revelation chapter 17 mm -hmm. and let us go back to verse three Verse three tells us, and he carried me, so. so he carried me, thank you, away in the spirit, in the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. So the picture is given in, the, in this vision that uh, of a woman sitting on the scarlet colored beast. Mm -hmm. It is not presented as a woman controlling the scarlet colored beast or riding the scarlet colored beast, but a woman sitting on the scarlet colored beast. Mm -hmm. And so we, we went into describing the scarlet colored beast, which is full of names of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. But I want to go over into verse seven and read verse seven just briefly. It says, and the angel said unto me, Wherefore this didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. Mm -hmm. Just to establish the point again, that the beast is carrying or bearing the woman. Mm -hmm. The woman is not controlling the beast, but the beast is bearing the woman mm -hmm. or carrying the woman. And this is so significant. It is significant in understanding who the scarlet colored beast is. It is significant in understanding that every single thing that happens in the world is not the Catholic's responsibility. It's not this, this is, it, 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 this is not the, the papacy that who is to be blamed for everything that happens on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Because the papacy is not controlling the scarlet colored bees. So you, you see things like same sex, uh, quote unquote, marriages and this gender insanity that is being pushed mm -hmm. upon our children and the different World Health Organization's policy mm -hmm. where they are seeking to depopulate the world. You don't look at the papacy and say that's the papacy. The exactly. Mm -hmm. You don't look at the papacy and say, well, that is the papacy. You, may, you, you will only say that if you think that the scarlet colored beast the same. is the same or is being controlled by the papacy. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And so this is very important to understand. So what we're looking at is the scarlet color beast, and we're going back into history to see what was said about this scarlet color beast. Here's what we are told. Just before, Brother Chef, and I just wanted to interject a while ago to show that what we are seeing too, as we emphasized last time, is that there are two separate entities. Yes. The Bible talks about the woman and the scarlet colored beast. They are different. They are two separate entities. And we saw that the scarlet colored, the scarlet colored beast is the same beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit that is mentioned not only further down in text in Revelation chapter um, 17, but also in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 7. Amen. Amen. I want to bring your attention back to this quotation by uh, Sister White. In This was in Desire of Ages. All right. And here's what she says. She says this, but, but the Jews had sought to make a monopoly of the truth, which is eternal life. Okay. Let me just get that clear. All right. So, but the Jews had sought to make a monopoly of the truth, which is eternal life. Mm -hmm. They had hoarded the living manner, and it had turned to corruption. The religion they tried to shut up to themselves became an offense. They robbed God of his glory and defrauded the world by a counterfeit of the gospel. They had refused to surrender themselves to God for the salvation of the world. And they became agents of Satan for its destruction. Notice the description of the Jews by Sister Ellen G. White here is such where she showed they became agents of Satan as a result of their rejection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is in line with the scriptures, Brother yes. Shepherd, because the, Jesus showed that they are of their father, the devil. Yes. Based on the works that they were doing. Yes. Right? In John they, 8, 44. Exactly, as liars and murderers. He yes. said so. And then his disciples um, also tell us that. Paul describes them as being contrary to all men. To all men. Because they, how they were seeking to kill him. They were seeking to murder him just because he was preaching Jesus Christ. And they hated Jesus Christ so much. They do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They rejected him and up to this day they continue to this to, re, to to reject him and say all kind of nasty things about him yes so she is in line sister white is in line with what the bible shows okay and so she says she continues the people whom god had called to be the pillar and ground of the truth had become representatives of satan mm. she's describing the jews here you know yes She's just describing the Jews. Now, some people will say, well, oh, this is anti-Semitism, but she's describing the Jews. And she's describing the Jewish ethos, the Jewish behavior at that time. Which has worsened. Which has led to the, the great blasphemy up to today. And here's what she continues to say. They were doing the work that he, Satan, desired them to do. And then she, she, she said this concerning concerning the the, the uh, scarlet colored beast she says and they so this is identifying the scarlet colored beast and they the two witnesses referring reflecting on revelation chapter 11 because she is exegeting a portion of revelation chapter 11 here mm -hmm. which speaks of the two witnesses and the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit so here's what she says as they the two witnesses were approaching the termination of their work in obscurity, war was to be made upon them by the power represented as the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. In many of the nations of Europe, the powers that ruled in church and state had for centuries been controlled by Satan through the medium of the papacy. But here is brought to view a new manifestation of satanic power. And so this, this is very important because here she distinguishes the beast from the papacy. Mm -hmm. And she showed, well, this is what the papacy did in the past, being led of Satan mm -hmm. for, the for the 1260 years. But here you have a power, which is a manifestation, yeah. a new manifestation of satanic power 
So it's the same Satan who controls the two. Mm -hmm. But here there's a distinction. There's the papacy and there's this new manifestation of satanic power, mm -hmm. which she identifies as being the scarlet, the, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. it is and you will remember that in chapter 17 of Revelation, the Bible tells us this in verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. So this is referring to the scarlet colored beast. Very important. Now she goes on to make some, some uh, other statements here, right? And I want to use this to go into some, some other quotations identifying the scarlet colored beast. Here's what she says. According to the words of the prophet, then... A little before the year 1798, some power of satanic origin and character would rise to make war upon the Bible. And in the land where the testimony of God's two witnesses should thus be silenced, there would be a manifestation, the atheism of the Pharaoh and the licentiousness of Sodom. This prophecy has received a most exact and striking fulfillment in the history of France. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just pause here to make this point. When you are dealing with this scarlet colored beast, notice that she's not identifying a particular uh, nation as the scarlet colored beast, but she identifies philosophy, mm -hmm. the philosophy of atheism and the behavior of licentiousness. Mm -hmm. This is what she has identified. So she goes on to say, this prophecy has received a most exact and striking fulfillment in the history of France. During the revolution in 1793, the world for the first time had an assembly of men born and educated in civilization and assuming the right to govern one of the finest of the European nations, uplift their united voice to deny the most solemn truth which man's soul receives and renounce unanimously the belief and worship of a deity." Mm -hmm. End of quote. So this was a rejection of God. This was a rejection of the law of God. This was the, the philosophy of atheism and the licentious behavior of Sodom. Mm -hmm. And this is what is identified here with the scarlet colored beast. So it is not identifying a particular nation, but we look at the philosophy first. And this is what happens here, because it is the philosophy that must first be identified, which we see the pattern in, in Sister White's writing here. Mm -hmm. And then the movement that carries that philosophy. So I, I want you to capture that. I want you to understand that, mm -hmm. that the focus here is on the philosophy. And then we can see what movement is, is, is carrying that philosophy. Mm -hmm. And then we can identify that's the scarlet colored beast. That's the name of blasphemy there. That's one of the names of blasphemy. Amen. And so here we have some, um, some identities of movements, organizations that carry the philosophy of communism, that carry the philosophy of atheism, that carries the philosophy of the Illuminati. And so we want to look at that some more. But here's a chart. Just before you um, go, Brother Chef, and just a and, um, comment here from Sister Anissa, let me just take it in quickly. In the same chapter, Ellen White shows that it was the papacy who caused the two witnesses to prophesy in sackcloth and in obscurity. Then she identifies at the end of that, the, at the end of that, the scarlet colored beast rises. Yes. It therefore cannot be the papacy because it was the papacy at work before it arose. Again, Amen. to show the distinction between the two entities, right? Amen. 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 All right. So what this this chart that I captured, I really don't know who, who did this chart, but thank you very much. It captures a summary of who the scarlet colored beast is. It is an apostate Jewish power at its root and it is an organization founded on Jewish spirit of blasphemy. Remember we're looking at that? Mm -hmm. due, to, due to their rejection of Jesus Christ. So this is the scarlet colored beast. It is not divorced from the Jews. 
It is an apostate Jewish power at its root, at its very foundation. We went back to show you that the Jews, as Sister, Sister Anne-Marie mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. they were the ones who brought blasphemy to the mainstream mm -hmm. and they caused others, including the Gentiles, to blaspheme. We read that as the behavior of Saul of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. Yes. We read that in the book of Acts. Yes. And it, it's important to understand that this is an organization founded on Jewish spirit of blasphemy due to their rejection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's look at some additional evidences, some additional quotations um, concerning this scarlet colored bees. And please follow this carefully. We have a lot of reading that we're going to do, but we want you to follow carefully because we are presenting to you evidences in identifying the scarlet colored bees. Brother, may don't say to Samanifa, did the chat. <laughs> thank, okay, you thank, thank you, Samanifa. We Sister captured Manifa. it from Brother Hume's study yesterday. Yes. Brother, yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. It was a screenshot we did. Yes. Um, to, to, to get it. All right. So it is an atheistic power. Here's what we are told. In Mark Dice's book, Mark Dice, in, in, in his book, The Illuminati, Facts and Fiction, here's what we are told concerning this atheistic atheistical power and remember again sister white identifies it as let, let me see if i find back that quotation as the position. atheistic as the atheistical power and i'm quoting her now the atheistical power that ruled in france during the revolution and the reign of terror did wage a war against god and his holy word as the world has never witnessed all right. Mm -hmm. And then she went on to say the worship of the deity was abolished by the National Assembly. This is in Great Controversy, page 273. <clears throat> so this scarlet colored beast, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, is referred to as the atheistical power that ruled in France. Not France, but the atheistical power that ruled in France. Mm -hmm. And this power caused the revolution and the reign of terror and this power was also known as the Illuminati. So here's what we are told in Mark Dice's book, the, Il the Illuminati Facts and Fiction on page 51. He says this, and I'm quoting, in 1797, a Jewish Jesuit priest a named, French, a, French. a French, sorry, <clears throat> Jesuit priest named Abe Baruel published a series of books on the Jacobins and their influence on the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. The Jacobins were a powerful political club in France, which helped organize the revolution in the late 1700s. Today, the term Jacobins or Jacob Jacobinism is sometimes used to describe left-wing revolutionary ideas. Bariel wrote four different volumes titled Memoirs Illustrating the History of Jacobinism, in which he explained that the French Revolution was a was a result of secret societies, largely the Bavarian Illuminati. So you see that? So the French Revolution, notice we are looking at the atheistical power. Mm -hmm. All right, stick with us here. We are looking at the atheistical power that mm -hmm. ruled in France, mm -hmm. which, which caused the French Revolution, mm -hmm. the architects of the French Revolution. And that has been identified as the scarlet colored beast. The atheistical power, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. And as we as we traverse through history, we are seeing that that power was rooted in secret societies. Mm -hmm. All right? And it was identified as Illuminati, Bavarian Illuminati. And here's what we are told in Teximar's uh, book, Conspiracy World. On page 18, he says this, the rallying cry and motto of the Illuminati in France was liberty, equality, fraternity, end of quote. So he also identify, he identifies the Illuminati as being the one behind the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. Because that was their cry, and this was the cry of the French Revolution, liberty, equality, 
and fraternity. We know it's licentiousness. Yes. Their liberty is licentiousness. We know they, they, they murdered. Mm -hmm. There was bloodshed. Mm -hmm. They rejected the law of God. They, they sought to abolish the family. Private sought to abolish pri private property. Governments. All of the cords that binds humans to God. They sought to abolish. And this is what we are, this, this is who we are told was behind it, the Illuminati in France. Now, this organization, I'm quoting from Brother Medina's uh, exegesis on Revelation chapter 17. He says that the Illuminati was a Jewish organization started by apostate Jews who rejected Jesus Christ in spirit, receiving their experience and learning from their Talmud and their Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. We are told this, the ideology, and he's quoting here from uh, Illuminati, the cult that hijacked the world, page, page three, mm -hmm. by Hen Henry Macau. And here's what Henry Macau says. <clears throat> now, the Talmud and the Kabbalah, these are horrible. Mm -hmm. These are horrible, horrible. horrible. These are the root, these, they are the root of Judaism. Mm -hmm. But here's what we are told. The ideology of world tyranny, Illuminism, derives from the Jewish Kabbalah, which preaches that man, that is the bankers, can usurp the place of God and redefine truth. Can you imagine that? I could imagine because I remember Yoval. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to imagine when you remember people like Yoval and the blasphemies <clears throat> that he speaks, figuring and that he's where, God. Where did they get that from? The Kabbalah and the Talmud. From the Talmud. These are people who believed, you know, I remember reading a story where they claim that a priest, was it a priest? I think it was a priest. It was a rabbi. A rabbi, rabbi. sorry. A rabbi was in conversation with God. And he won the argument. And the rabbi and God were in a debate. And the rabbi won God in that debate. Mm -hmm. This is the level of blasphemy these people are involved in. And, and some of their some of their things are nasty, nasty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 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 we could actually go back to the scriptures and, and see, you know, because you remember when they were accusing Jesus of um they were saying that we, we, we are not born of fornication. fornication. Yes. Right? So they were accusing him of yeah. being born of um fornication and referring to him as Belzebub and so forth rejecting what he was doing here you have a man sin free no sin at all in his experience doing nothing wrong nothing nothing evil going about preaching you know the gospel to people that they may be saved from their sins healing you know doing miracles to confirm the work done in their hearts to save them from sin and they will look at this man and accuse him of blasphemy accuse him of being the devil yeah. accuse him of being born of fornication yeah so we see that spirit you know from the scriptures right down to today it's a blasphemous spirit yes all because of what rejection, rejection of, of jesus, jesus christ. christ so the quotation continued the quotation from uh henry macau illuminati the, the cult that hijacked the world page page three he says this <clears throat> In 1770, a syndicate of bankers led by, led by Mayor Rothschild started the Illuminati, a satanic cult designed to subvert society. The Rothschild syndicate included Jewish financiers such as Daniel Itzig, Friedlander, and Goldsmiths, and Moses Makata, Mokata. End of quote. So here we have been established. The point in quoting this is to show you, look, when we think of the French Revolution, we ask the question, who is at the root of it? Mm -hmm. who's responsible and who, who is responsible? We seek to identify the power, the atheistic power, atheistical power that ruled in France. Mm -hmm. And we are led to see that it is the Jews mm -hmm who formed this organization called the Illuminati. So it is the Illuminati, which is made up of rich, on, led by rich 
international bankers. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, in, in the 1700s, it was Mayor Rothschild. He was the one who started the Illuminati. And this was, this was uh, you know, um, financed by Jewish financiers. Mm -hmm. And their objective was what? To subvert the world. Now, here's what we are told further in the same book by Henry Macau, Illuminati, the cult that hijacked the world. We are told this. In 1773, Anshel Mir, Anshel Mir Rothschild, in an Orthodox Jew, convened a meeting of 12 prominent Jewish bankers. They refined their program, baiting the hook with a spurious promise of liberty, fraternity, and equality. In 1848, the Communist Manifesto, which demands the theft of pri private property and the destruction of liberty and family in the name of equality, reflects their satanic agenda. Mm -hmm. So you have, in 1773, this, this organization was in progress. And what was their motto? Liberty, fraternity, and equality. equality. Mm -hmm. But notice it was started by an Orthodox Jew. And then you have, in 1843, 1848, the Communist Manifesto declaring or outlining. They, they hired Karl Marx to do that, mm -hmm. to outline a manifesto showing exactly what they want to happen to the world. How to demoralize the world. <clears throat> so here we have the theft of private property and the destruction of liberty and family in the name of equality, mm -hmm. right? And then he goes on to say in 1776, they appointed Adam Weisshoff to reorganize the Illuminati, which merged with Freemasonry in 1782. Mm -hmm. The Kabbalistic bankers were behind the revolutionary movement of the 17th to the 20th centuries, all well as each respective reign of, as well as each respective reign of terror. They finagled a monopoly of credit, usurping the government's right to create money and have used it to conquer the world. Since they created money out of nothing, they think they are God. This meshes the Messianic Jewish and Kabbalistic prophecies, end of quote. Now, they're deceived, yeah. think that they are God. But when you were talking there, I was trying to um, remember a text, but I can't seem to find it. Pass, pass me the Revelation book there for me, please. Yes. Right. I can't seem to find it, but it's it's um, the fact that when they promise, when they promise liberty, is really licentiousness. Yes. They give into the world. So while they cried, you know, liberty, equality, and fraternity, it's really licentiousness they were given to the world. Yes. A license to sin, a license to do evil, to practice immorality. That is what they were given to the world. But I can't seem to find it. It was in Peter. But that came to mind. So, you know, sometimes I remember at school when I read the, um, whether about the French Revolution in history, it was presented those those three um words liberty fraternity and equality as it, it was presented as something you know it's yes. a good thing they were you know they were fighting yes. for and things like that but when you understand the history as to what really happened and who was responsible for it you see it wasn't any true liberty or freedom it was licentiousness it was it was licensed to sin to do all manner of sin all manner of immoralities destroying the cords that god's god has set up mm -hmm. to drum into him as brother Sheffield was mentioning before marriage you know gender that is their that 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 is what they're all about is nothing to do with true freedom and true liberty of conscience but it is licentiousness amen. and who was behind it the jews that's what we are seeing amen and we're seeing that clear right amen we see that clear. All right. Here says a quotation from Sister White. She says, she says, the corruption, let me just read a little bit above. She says, the great city is also compared spiritually to Sodom. The corruption of Sodom 
in breaking the law of God was especially manifested in licentiousness. See that? So this liberty is licentiousness, mm -hmm. right? Amen. This is what they promise. Licentiousness. Amen. There's another quotation somewhere. Okay, while you look, Brother Shefan, let me just mention <clears throat> the text that I was looking for. Sister Monifa reminded me of it. Thank you, Sister Monifa. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 19, which says, While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. All right. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. But I can't find the quotation right now. Okay. But, uh, you know, I was reading where she was She was showing the, the, the objectives of this power, which is to abolish um, family, you understand, to attack the family, to attack government, mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, I, I can't find it now, but I'll, I'll get it at some point. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. And that is made clear in the Jewish um, manifesto. Yes. The destruction of um, morality private property, and so forth. Yes. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. So so we are, seeing, we are seeing from these quotations that it is a Jewish power. It is a Jewish power at its root, mm -hmm. this scarlet colored beast, this Jewish at its root, and it's the result of rejection, rejecting Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing, we are seeing that by, by seeing or identifying Mm -hmm. that atheistical power that ruled in France. And this atheistical power that ruled in France was the Illuminati, mm -hmm. founded and formed and financed by the Jewish uh, bankers, Orthodox Jews. Mm -hmm. And they, they, their philosophy is based upon what they capture from the Talmud and the Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are seeing here. Which shows that they are full of names of blasphemy. Exactly. All right. All right. So notice their objective is to is 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 to un, is to destroy society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we are we are further told this. There's another quotation here from the same Macau mm -hmm. Illuminati, the cult that hijacked the world. Here's what we are told concerning the atheistical power again that it is Jewish led and it is it is as a result of rejecting Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right? And it comes from their own apostasy, from the teachings of apostate Judaism. Here's what we are told. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In on page 13 of the uh the cult that hijacked the world by um uh Macau, Henry Macau, we are told this. Judaism rejects Moses' vision of God as a moral force. Its basic doctrine is that God is the ends of, in nature essence, which has no attributes and can neither know nor be known. That is atheism, so-called Phariseeism, which at, at base is crass paganism, pantheistic atheism, a congl conglomeration of all the forms of paganism concocted through the centuries. New descriptions concocted for this very old Satanism, such as Marx dialectic materialism merely dresses up all pagan concepts, end of quote. Mm -hmm. So they have a concept of God as being in soft, in nature essence, according to this quotation, which has no attributes and can neither be known, all right, and can cannot know. So, you, you know, it, it can know, it can neither know nor be known. That is their concept of God. That was Moses' concept of God. And while they have That's that the concept, they, they, they put of God. themselves in the place of God. Because they figured they were gods, you were reading an application to that effect earlier. Yeah. Figuring because they can make money, then they are gods. Yeah. You see? Right. So they reject the king, the king of kings, and they figure they, the globalists, they, the elite, they are God. Yeah. What great deception. 
right amen so we are identifying the scarlet colored bees right you know what i'm thinking brother shepherd as you were reading i said but look, i said to myself but look we saw you we saw it being identified we saw this this power being identified in scripture mm -hmm. we saw it um by sister ellen g white through the spirit of prophecy that was in her and now look we see it in in books from these men yep so it is it is it can be identified and it's clearly identified in scriptures and in history who these who the scarlet colored beast is yeah Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Amen, Sister Monifa. So that is a pagan God and not Yahweh. Amen. 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 All right. All right. So this is this what they were involved in. Now, the, the, the Bible tells us that the scarlet colored beast has many names of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Maybe back up the chat at some point. All right. Yeah. So with that one. Mm -hmm. The many names. All right. So these are some of the names. And the names, um, you know, it, it it the philosophy hides itself behind these names. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are names, remember Sister White identifies it as a new manifestation of satanic power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this new manifestation of satanic power has taken these names to cover its evil agenda mm -hmm. by presenting itself as benevolent. Amen. So Brother Medina says it's, this. It's not, class. it's not by chance, Brother Shefran, that the Bible identifies it as having names of blasphemy. Yes. So the blasphemy of this beast is in its many names. These are the multitudinous names this new power has taken to cover its evil agenda by benevolent appearances. Mm -hmm. And here are some of them. There is Talmudism, mm -hmm. Kabbalism, Judaism, Zionism. So the, you know, that's, that's, that's the Jewish um, root of the thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the scarlet colored beast. But when you hear Judaism, people are like, oh, that's just another religion. Yeah, in fact, they put and what it the Christians, what 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 the apostate um, evangelicals will do, apostate Protestants will do, is to say we are Judo Christi we are Judo Christian, mm -hmm. right? Judo Christian nation and mm -hmm. so on, right? Mm -hmm. Presenting it as something, something good. benevolent and good. Mm -hmm. Then there's Illuminati. That's another one, right? And the Illuminati in itself, the name in itself, has to do with being enlightened. It has to do with being il illuminated, right? Mm -hmm. World Jewish Congress, the ben Benai Bereth, Anti-Defamation League, Freemason Lodges. I remember my grandfather was in a lodge. He presented it as something that is that's good, you know, brotherhood and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. League of the Just, Communism, Socialism, Bolshevism, Fabianism, Communitarianism, all these are names. So there was the League of the Communists and then there was the League of the Just. Mm -hmm. There was a name change mm -hmm. to the League of the Just. To make it more acceptable. Yes. The New World Order. So you hear, you hear people like George Bush Senior talk about the New World Order. You hear people like um, the Prime Minister of Britain there, the past one, the British uh, guy. What's mm -hmm. his name again? Boris Nel B Boris um, Johnson. Johnson talk about the New World Order. You hear all these people talk about the New World Order as if it's a good thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And what replaces the New World Order now as in phraseology? Is the great reset, mm -hmm. the build back better. All these are names of blasphemy. Globalism, the United Nation. All these are names of the blasphemy of the scarlet colored beast because all of them are atheistic. 
-hmm. New Age Movement, New Age Religion, Spiritualism, IMF, World Bank, the Federal Reserve, the huge banking institution, the Council for Foreign um, Relations. You have the Bil Bilderbergers. And we, we have so many others. Could bring up the chat, I'm sure some more. Right? Mm -hmm. Carrying the same philosophy, same atheism, the same subversive um, behavior of seeking to destroy or re engineer society mm -hmm. to we get rid Christ. of the social Christi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me let me bring back up that chart there, even as you said it, right? Mm -hmm. So we could identify them in modern names, modern names that they use. So when people see them and hear them, they will know that the philosophy that they hold is blasphemous. It is against God. It is the same scarlet colored beast that is described in Revelation chapter 17. Yes. They just call themselves different. They are just found or covered with these names, different institutions, different organizations like we call some before the Illuminati, Communism, Globalism, New World Order, Black Rock, Vanguard, State Street, the IMF, the UN, WHO, the Big Tech, Banks, NATO, FBI, CIA, mm -hmm. the WEF. Don't forget that name. These people were responsible for, for the uh, Mexican mandate. You see different Judas governments all over the world following climate change you know that is a big thing now mm -hmm. it's a lie the lie of climate change national banks israel gold silver they control almost all nations we are told all mainstream media military industrial complex all food companies big oil and and gas pharmaceutical corporations space companies all gender issues and that shows that they are full of names of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. It's the king of the south. It's the elite. This is what makes up, you know, the, 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 what, we were this, what we were explaining before, the philosophies is what is hidden behind all these organizations that you see on this chart here. So don't be mistaken when they'll, they'll come and present themselves as good, as if they want to do good for society. They want the best for society. But they do not love you. They do not love you because they reject Christ who is love. Christ is love. God is love. And they reject him. So how can they love you? They can't. So don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. Understand your enemies well. And reject them. And accept the truths of Jesus Christ, the character, the lovely character of Jesus Christ to make you sin free, to prepare you for the second coming of Jesus Christ, that you will not receive the plagues, the plagues that will come upon these blasphemous organizations, the destruction that God has stored up for them. We want you to escape that. And this is why we are bringing these things to you by God's grace. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. So we can show other things, you know. Um, we can show other things, but our time is running out mm -hmm. at this point. But let me go back to the quotation I was looking for. Okay, got it. And let me share this quotation with you. Because and I I'll, I'll bring back this quotation again when we go further into this scarlet colored beast as we as we make progress throughout the chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what um, here's what Sister White tells us. I'm reading to you from. Uh, this is Great Controversy, page page two hundred and eighty six. Great Controversy, page two hundred and eighty six. She makes a very important statement here. She says. From devastated provinces, so we're going back to France, where this atheistic power, mm -hmm. atheistical power ruled, right? From devastated provinces and ruined cities, a terrible cry was heard. 
a cry of bitterest anguish. France was shaken as if by an earthquake. Religion, law, social order, the family, the state, the church, all were smitten down by the impious hand that has that had been lifted against the law of God. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Let me re read that again. And I know I have to read it again when we go into the scarlet colored beasts and their intentions, right? Mm -hmm. She says, from devastated provinces and ruined cities, a terrible cry was heard. A cry of bitterest anguish. France was shaken as if by an earthquake. Religion, law, social order, the family, the state, and the church all were smitten down by the impious hand that had been lifted against the law of God. Mm -hmm. See that? So anything that has to do with God, anything that has yes. to do with religion, yes. they destroy. Yes. And they say that in the Communist Man Manifesto as well. Yes. They describe religion as the opium of the people. And that is why, that is why I quoted this. Because remember they have the list of things that they sought to abolish and they seek to abolish mm -hmm. scarlet colored beasts, mm -hmm. including the family, including government, right? Including religion. Mm -hmm. All forms of religion. And that is that is that is what they sought to do mm -hmm. in the French Revolution. So the atheistical power that ruled in France is identified as a hand that lift that had been lifted against the law of God. That is why we tell that is why we tell the king of the south or the scarlet colored beast that the law of God had dominion over you mm -hmm. as long as you live it. Amen. So it doesn't matter what you will want to think, the law of God had dominion over you as long as you live it. Amen. And this same law is a standard of judgment for you. And that is why we neither go to the left, left nor to the right. We exalt the law of God. But yeah. we walk in the path of obedience to the law of God. Amen. Amen. Because when you when you look at the left, the left is against the law of God. Mm -hmm. And this they, they're seeking to create a society that is atheistic. Mm -hmm. And you look to the right, and they too are against the law of God. That's why they say law, 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 law. Because these evangelicals hate the, the Sabbath. Yes, they break the commandments. You understand? The They're Sabbath. seeking for the mark of the beast, which is Sunday legislated by law with penalties. Mm -hmm. and that is what they will be seeking. Mm -hmm. And to them, what do we say? To them, we say Jesus is that king. Jesus Christ is king. Keep his seventh the Sabbath. To keep. them we say that Jesus Christ is Yahweh of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so this is where we'll stay this evening. By God's grace. We will continue next week. And next week we're going to go into verse 4 and verse 5, which deals specifically with Babylon. Amen. Bereshafan, if we could just, we just have, we have a few more minutes actually, you know. A few more minutes. Yeah, I think you are slow. touching the time. Is this slow? Yeah. Okay. So we could just go back to Revelation chapter seventeen, right? Because while we hear, while we hear of this, you know, blasphemous organization and the wickedness that they have done and that they do, even you know, covering themselves a bit today. We know, we have the hope that they will not last forever. Mm -hmm. We have the hope that they will be destroyed by the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So I want us to go back to Revelation chapter 17, and we are going to read verse uh, 12. Verse, verse 12. 
Yes. Yes. Verse 12? Um, no, it's the verse, one that shows. No. All right. No, it's verse, verse 14. It's not verse 12. 14. Right, it's verse 14. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's not verse 12. Verse 14. All right, so verse 14 says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. faithful. So we have the hope that Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of Lords, who is Lord of Lords and who is King of Kings, who is the Lamb whom we must follow, whithersoever he goeth, he will overcome them. Mm-hmm. Even if they make war with him, because that is what they're doing. That is what the scarlet color, uh, the scarlet color beast is doing in society. They are making war with him by destroying his social cards. Mm-hmm. Okay, they are making war with him by fighting against him in in the Christian mm-hmm. or him in us, seeking to force us, for example, to sin against God. That is what they are doing, and we know that the King of the North will do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, seeking to force our consciences to accept the mark of the beast instead of following Yahweh, instead of following Yahweh by being obedient to his seventh day Sabbath. But what we know from the scriptures, what we are assured of, is that they will not win, they will not have the victory. It is the Lamb that will have the victory. Mm-hmm. So, what we have to make sure we do is to follow the Lamb. Mm -hmm. the lamb is jesus christ and the bible describes a certain set of people who live in the end referring to them even as the 144,000, those who will live to see jesus christ burst the cloud it describes them as following the lamb whithersoever he quit amen so we know that once we follow the lamb which is to follow his truths we will be on the side of victory while the scarlet colored beast and while the king of the north will be destroyed so this is our call to you come into the ark of safety accept the the truths of jesus christ to save you away from the evil philosophies the errors of these organizations the errors of these entities that will cause you to be lost we are calling you away from that we are calling you out of babylon even false religion the apostate churches we are calling you away from that we are calling you on to sinfulness. We are calling you to follow the Lamb in sinfulness. And we pray that you will accept this call today as you hear His voice, as you hear the voice of God through the truths that are presented, as the Holy Spirit work upon your mind, showing you your need to change, your need to be justified, showing you the lateness of time, and therefore your need to be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ, as the Holy Spirit does that to you this evening. We pray that you will accept. We pray that you will give yourself a chance and be justified by God. Amen. 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 Because this is, this is where the scripture says, they shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. The fact of the matter is, it it reminds me of Revelation 13, Mm -hmm. where the beast of Revelation 13 the second beast is described as having lamb-like horns mm-hmm. and uh, one being protestantism the other being republicanism mm-hmm. so our very rights will be violated religious liberty will flee mm-hmm. when they speak like a dragon the the protection of religious liberty will flee mm-hmm. and they will make war against us because of the christ that is in us mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that the rejection of Jesus Christ lay at the root of Jewish apostasy. Mm -hmm. And that is what created the scarlet colored beasts. Yes. So as they see Christ in us, they will seek to destroy us. Mm -hmm. But you can't destroy Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So you, you will kill the body and we have to be repaired. For our, 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 for, for, for us to be martyred or killed, for Christ's sake, because some of us will, some of us will be. 
But the assurance in the scripture is important, and I'm glad you highlighted that look, the lamb will make war, you know. The lamb will make war. It'll overcome them. And the lamb will overcome. The lamb will respond. The lamb has a war names. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. King of kings and lords, lord of lords. Mm -hmm. And he will overcome every single one of them. Whether you whether you be Claus Shrab, that that mega guy Jew, whether you be um Yuval, Yuval mm -hmm. whether you, whoever you may be, mm -hmm. Joe Biden, Bill Gates. who didn't win last time, whoever you Bill Gates, whoever you may be, and you have an agenda to destroy the world, to remove the social Christi, to destroy the social Christi, to remove the influence of Christ from society pushing all these transgender uh, immorality, mm -hmm. the mutilation of children, mm -hmm. the vaccination of five and six month old babies with mRNA vaccines, global lockdown, climate change, hoax, all of this to have the world population reduced to controllable levels. Mm -hmm. All of you will be overcome. The alarm will do it because mm -hmm. your behavior is an attack that has as its root the rejection of Jesus Christ. And the Lamb will overcome you. Amen. So even as you attack liberty, liberty of conscience, and even as you attack Protestantism, mm -hmm. which we are true Protestants, mm -hmm. the Lamb himself will respond. Amen. As Lord of Lords, and king of kings and he will overcome you amen right mm -hmm. so we have that assurance and let us be prepared to to to, to give our bodies you understand mm -hmm. let us be prepared to die mm -hmm. with the assurance that with the faith of jesus christ in our hearts we will be resurrected again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and remember brother shepherd as well that the very truths that we that we preach from the scriptures the very exposure that we give them is overcoming them. Yeah. Because yeah. The, the, the errors, it exposes the errors that they have and it call it calls men away from those errors. And some will be saved as a result. Yeah. Some will and, see and their in, evils and reject it and come to know the truth and be saved. And in preaching, so that is destruction we will too. be telling them of their death penalty. Yes. Because this is the, this is a death penalty scripture here, passage in Revelation 17. Mm -hmm. This is the death penalty of the woman. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we will be preaching its doom. And we'll also be preaching the doom of the scarlet colored beast mm -hmm. because it will self-destruct. Amen. Okay? It will go into perdition, the scripture says. Mm -hmm. But the lamb never goes into perdition. Amen. You understand? Yeah. And the Lamb will overcome them Amen. by God's grace. Yes. So, Sister Amri, can you pray to close for us, please? Yes. Okay, so... Remember us... what, what she said. Come into the ark of safety. Amen. The Thusia Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. We say this not as a boast, but as a matter of truth. Laodicea does not understand Revelation chapter 17. Their theologians are preaching error and you can't in relation the to this to the scarlet colored beast. They do not have the spirit of prophecy. They they are claiming that the scarlet colored beast is somehow the same as the papacy. They do not have the clarity of the truth. They are putting scripture against scripture, mm -hmm. and they are speaking from the torch of false prophecy and because they, they are exactly apostasy. exactly. So come into the ark. The fallen Protestants, they reject the law of God. Whoever they may be, they reject the law of God. Evangelicals, the Methodists, the Anglican, all of them reject the law of God. So they cannot help. So they cannot help you. The non-Christian religions, which are the dragon type religions, they are no way, no way in 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 in, in the reckoning of of, of um, Christianity or anything like that. They reject Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They they follow pantheistic pagan gods. They they have raw spiritualism. Mm -hmm. You understand? 
so they can't help you and these scarlet colored um, beasts agents who are feeding people with philosophy certain philosophies that are atheistic and communistic under the guise of science and and you know <laughs> other things like that environmental environmental, environmental protection and so forth they can't help you either because the environment will be destroyed the the um the elements will melt with fervent heat mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the atmosphere will be sucked out of the planet destruction is coming mm -hmm. no environmentalist can save the earth at that time come into the ark before mm -hmm. it is too late mm -hmm. absolutely just to take in a few maybe one or two comments brother chef lunch sister chantel says they said jesus is king this is referring to the king of the north right fallen protestants they said jesus is king we say where is his law okay lisa says they are seeking sunday exaltation uh brother marlon says amen love that encouraging scripture of promise uh brother medina sister del the lamb is the end the lamb in the end time is militant and is a warrior after the resurrection amen brother Midan says we two the assembly adventist church know that they will be destroyed but they don't know and this is why we tell them brother Midan. yes amen amen thank you brethren thank amen. you for viewing thank you for commenting may god bless you let us end with prayer amen gracious and loving father in heaven once again we come before your throne of grace thanking you for your help towards us in helping us to show these things from your word and from your spirit of prophecy found in sister white and from history to properly identify the scarlet colored beasts oh dear father the jewish organization of blasphemy which have destroyed the world in so many ways oh dear god demoralizing the people we thank you for showing us these things, O oh Lord, that we may escape them through the knowledge of Jesus Christ, saving us away from sin and show others that they too may have an opportunity to escape the King of the South, to escape this evil and come into the ark of safety. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for raising us up, O oh dear loving Father, as your people in these last days. We pray that you will help us by giving us the experience of all time sinfulness that you can use us to help our fellow men, O oh dear God. We pray, O oh dear God, that you'll continue to help us to have beachheads in different countries, O oh dear Lord, that men will come to know the real gospel and be saved away from sin, be saved away from the, the deception and the destruction that is soon to come. We thank you, O oh dear Lord, and we ask for your continued blessings upon us. We love you and thank you for first loving us. In Jesus' name we pray these things with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 So my dear brethren and friends, <clears throat> thank you for joining us. And may God bless you until we meet again next week, God's willing, in Jesus' holy name. There's a, there, let, me, let me get the... Amen. Um, <laughs> amen, right? So take this in even as we say farewell. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. All right, so coming right up. Jesus is King. Jesus is Yahweh. Keep his Sabbath day.